I want to I want to stay on track this time. And I have asked, actually, it's awful bright up here. I've asked if the light on the left can be dimmed a bit. But um, so first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Bob Sullivan. I'm the mayor of the city of Brockton. And I just want to thank you all for being here. This is a really good representation of residents, business owners, clergy, uh, civic uh, activists. Uh, we have a lot of different associations here. Um, and this is what it means to come together. Um, we did a uh, community engagement meeting here in this, in this forum not too long ago. Uh, but I thought it would be more than appropriate to have a Stop the Violence evening tonight uh, with the uptick in, uh, in shootings. Um, we had a round table uh, at City Hall in the GAR room uh, where it was a listening and learning best practices. But let me just be clear. Um, there's a root cause to this uptick. It's drug-related activities. Uh, the gentlemen and women that are here tonight, we're going to answer the questions that we can't answer, give the information that we can, but any active investigation, of course, you have to appreciate it's a pending matter. And as a lawyer, I would never ask anybody to disclose that. Um, but I, I, I wanted to say, as the mayor, I'm very, very concerned because we're talking February, now it's March, uh, what's going to happen going into the spring and summer months. Um, the meeting that I had with District Attorney Tim Cruz and, uh, and his first assistant, former judge, uh, Rick Savignano, um, and Manny Gomes, the police chief. Now, I just want to say Chief Gomes had a planned vacation. He is outside of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but he sent um, Paul Bonacca to be here tonight. Um, and again, we have from the state police, Jay Farley. Of course, we have uh, City Council President Shirley Azak. Um, we have representatives from the schools. Mike Thomas, the superintendent of schools, unfortunately is being interviewed tonight by the Department of Education. It's a pending, uh, I just left there, it's a pending thing. So uh, Lieutenant Vidaro is here as well. And of course we have uh, uh, Deputy Chief Solomon from the Fire Department. Fire Chief Williams actually is up in Worcester. He's been up there for several days at a, at a conference for fire chiefs. So the individuals here tonight are uh, trained professionals. We all uh, have a shared purpose for a safer community. And uh, as mayor, it's my job to make sure that. And as a dad of three young kids, I'm concerned about it as well. But I just wanted to be clear. Again, the active investigations, the thing we're seeing that are happening um, are, uh, are all related uh, currently uh, to similar things being drugs. I do want to recognize, if I could, uh, a few individuals that are here tonight. Um, uh, in terms of elected officials, we have Joyce Azak, and Tony Rodriguez from the school committee. Thank you both for being here tonight. Um, city councilors, I don't. I know there's going to be a few. I don't know if there's any here in attendance tonight, Council President. Yes, uh, Council Fowell. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Council <laughs> Council Fowell and former Mayor Wynn Fowell in the back, and Council uh, from Ward Four, Susan DeCastro is here as well. And I do expect more people. But really, the gist and the agenda tonight is to hear from law enforcement, public safety officials. Uh, the people that are here are definitely the trained professionals that could give us advice and suggestions. Uh, Jeff Thompson is here as well uh, from, from City Tim Council. Sullivan. Tim Sullivan from School Committee as well. And the chair, who's Mark Mark, the Vice Chair Mark D'Agostino is here, Ward 3, School Committee. Um, but with that being said, um, what we're going to do to stay on track tonight, we have the two microphones. This is being filled by Brockton Community Access. Um, we have to stay on track. I, I got a lot of flack. Last time we were well over. Some people were upset. Uh, not to cut people short, um, but it was six to eight, and we have to stay to that tonight. Um, so with that being said, um, I don't know if anybody, we can go right down the line. We can go with Attorney Savignano uh, first, uh, just his openings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Rick Savignano. I'm the first Assistant District Attorney for Plymouth County. Uh, I was invited to be here this evening by Mayor Sullivan. And I appear on behalf of DA Tim Cruz, who's in Tennessee at a uh, national DA's conference this evening. Like everyone here uh, in the audience and up here on the stage, uh, I know the city well. Uh, and uh, like all of you, I care, and the people in my office care passionately about the people who live here and raise families here. I was born in Broughton. I was raised in Broughton. I've lived in Broughton my entire life. I raised my children in Broughton and educated them here as well. Uh, for almost 40 years, I've worked both as an assistant district attorney and as a judge in this community, which covers most of my professional career. And I understand and I appreciate the concern that brings all of us out tonight to this venue. And I commend all of you for being here, showing the interest and the commitment to the community that we all love. I can assure you without reservation that the DA's office, that is the women and men, my colleagues who prosecute crimes in Plymouth County, 
together with our state police unit and the Brockton Police, we're committed to working collaboratively and working cooperatively with local law enforcement, federal law enforcement, uh, the local community groups to preserve and to promote and to protect public safety for everyone that lives in this city. And uh, I, since I'm first, I'll say it first, but I imagine everyone on this panel will probably echo the same sentiment. Uh, we all agree that any one crime of violence alone is too many and can't be tolerated. So with my brief time up here tonight, it's my hope and my intention to place the most recent incidents into some broader historical context um, that might help explain a little bit about what's going on. As the mayor has pointed out, and the mayor has been um, fully committed and fully engaged in this process since the day he was sworn in, uh, by way of background, it is important to understand that the Brockton police investigate any incidents of shots being fired in the city, and that's through the 911 system and the city's shot spotter system. To date, in calendar year 2020, there have been three confirmed individuals struck by gunfire since the beginning of the year. And that number includes the two individuals that were shot a week ago, uh, February 26th. We remain committed to the principle that any level of violence is unacceptable, and we will thoroughly investigate and prosecute all incidents of shots being fired in the city with the goal of preventing the next one. As the mayor pointed out, and he's correct, there is a clear, undeniable nexus between individuals engaging in firearm violence in Broughton and those who are engaged in the distribution of illicit and illegal drugs. And as a result, the Broughton Police, our state police unit, other units of the state police, the FBI, ATF, in collaboration with our office, the Plymouth County District Attorney's Office, and the United States Attorney's Office, we conduct proactive investigations of drug distribution with the goal of both taking deadly drugs off the street and taking firearms off the street. Because you cannot talk about firearm violence without talking about drug crimes. They are inextricably intertwined in this community. Uh, and it is our objective to always prevent the next episode of violence before it happens. And we do that. How do we do that in the DA's office? We do it by collaboration. Uh, and by aggressive prosecution of firearms offenses. We work hand in hand with our colleagues in the Broughton Police Department, all levels of the state police, and all levels of federal law enforcement partnerships. Uh, and what we've done in Broughton over the last several years has been a model not just for the region, but for the nation. We know that the traditional law enforcement approach of just locking people up is not enough and it is not the correct approach to keep violence low, which is why we've made the community an integral part of the DA's anti-violence strategy. We hold monthly Safe Street meetings where we have representatives of local, state, and federal law enforcement to make sure that you, the members of the community, know what we're doing and to hear from you, more importantly, as to what your concerns are and uh, what worries you about what's going on in the city and what we should know, and we listen. Just a few hours after last Wednesday's shooting, along with a number of my colleagues, we attended, and with the mayor, I might add, we attended a Safe Streets meeting with Brockton residents, city councilors, uh, and other community leaders. Last week, members of our office attended and presented in both Wards 2 and 5 at the invitation of Councilors Thompson and Monaghan. Through our Project Safe Neighborhoods and Safe Streets initiative, We've built an effective and enduring coalition of community members, faith-based uh, programs, clergy, service providers, and law enforcement to proactively address the root causes of violence and recidivism in our community. We believe that the statistics are important to understand, and I'm not gonna make a PowerPoint presentation, that's not my intention, but I'm gonna just hit a few highlights of what we've learned over the last several years. As part of the Project Safe Neighborhood and Safe Street initiatives administered by the Plymouth County District Attorney's Office, we have collected and analyzed data regarding the rate of firearm incidents for the past five to 10 years. We have a handle and a knowledge of what's gone on during that time frame, and it's important to take a look at it, always with, again, the proviso that any act of firearm violence is intolerable, 
but it's important to know what the numbers tell us. In, in, excuse me, in 2019, there were 180 so-called firearm incidents in the city of Brockton. Now, what's a firearm incident? It's defined in, it's a broad category. It means circumstances in which a gun was recovered or seized by the police, when it may not have been fired. Individuals charged with unlawful possession of ammunition, use of weapons in robberies or narcotics offenses, assaultive crimes, discharges, that is shots fired, and regrettably, we had four firearm, firearm homicides in the city in 2019. As intolerable as all of that is, and as unacceptable as all of that is in our community, that number of firearms incidents was a 6% decrease from 2018, a 20, excuse me, a, yes, a 6% increase from 2018, a 26% decrease from 2017, and a 16% decrease from 2016. So over the last three years, we've had decreases of 6, 26, and 16% in terms of firearm incidents. Not people getting shot, but fire, the whole broad category of firearm incidents in the city. Over the past decade, from 2010 until now, 2020, overall firearm-related crimes in the city of Brockton are down 36%. So in 2010, there was 36% more firearm-related incidents in the city of Brockton than there, than there were in 2019 and than there are today. Aggravated assaults with firearms during that period are down 36%. Armed robberies are down 71%. Persons shot, which of course is the most important category, of, uh, within the subcategory within firearms incidents, the number of individuals shot in 2019 was down 23% from the year before. And although there have been three incidents, two incidents and three people shot in 2019, in 2020, forgive me on the years, I'm sorry. There have been three people shot in two separate incidents. That is still far beyond where we were several years ago. It's intolerable, it's unacceptable, but the numbers are lower. We are trending in the right direction. The statistics are showing that the collaborative efforts that we take, and our office collaborates with everyone in law enforcement, our sisters and brothers at the Brockton Police Department, in the state police, in federal law enforcement, statewide law enforcement, we're working proactively because we recognize and understand and appreciate that undeniable nexus between illicit drug distribution markets and gun violence. And so our proactive measures to fight illicit drug trafficking in our city goes hand in hand with our efforts to reduce firearm incidents and firearm violence. I can assure you that the dedicated women and men of my office, my colleagues in the Plymouth County District Attorney's Office, who are responsible for prosecuting these cases in our courts, we will continue to work with our partners in the community and our office also includes not just the prosecutors, but approximately 25 state police who are assigned to our office in the Massachusetts State Police Detectives Unit, what used to be called a CPAC unit. And they are located in downtown Broughton. All of us at the DA's office are committed to maintaining those open lines of communication with our community, the people we serve every single day, we're also committed to working closely with the Brockton Police Department, with City Hall, and I will commend the mayor publicly. Uh, from the day he's been sworn in, there's been a constant dialogue, even before some of these incidents happened, about what we need, what, need, what we need to do better, how we need to uh, make sure the community is engaged in this process, that we're listening, and that we're taking the appropriate action. Uh, that dialogue has begun and has gone on in earnest for two months uh, during this administration. And it's gratifying. It's gratifying as someone who lives here and as someone who works here professionally. We are committed to doing everything that we can to keep these statistics moving in that downward direction. I give you those statistics one more time, I'll say it. Not to say that any level of violence is acceptable. It's not. But we are doing everything that we can every single day 
to keep those numbers going down and to get at the root causes of firearm violence in our community. And with that, I'm sorry I, I spoke a little too long, no, uh, but I will yield, uh, Mr. Mayor, to whoever wishes to go next. Attorney Savignano, thank you. Uh, it was very informative. Statistics are always uh, really important. I do want to recognize uh, Council at Large Rita Mendez for being here and Tina Cardoza for being here as well. Thank you, both of you, for being here. I want to recognize uh, department heads from the city of Brock and are here in full force. Uh, we also have uh, uh, many different law enforcement. We have Deputy Chief uh, uh, Mark Eddy uh, from the fire department as well. Um, I just want to share with you um, some information as mayor. When this uh, uptick or increase, or however you want to phrase it, happened, I sat down face to face with uh, interim acting chief Manny Gomes and I said, listen, we need to get more presence, more cruises out on the streets, number one. Manny said, yep, we'll do it. And he did it that day. And I said, in the warmer months, we're gonna get more police presence walking downtown, and, and real visibility uh, as really as, as, a, as a, really as a uh, detriment um, uh, in terms of trying to stop uh, crime. Now we're talking about gun, gun violence right here, but it's all crime, you know? It doesn't matter what it is. And I know that the city council and of course the council president and myself and the school committee and vice chairman uh, is here tonight. Um, we have all shared vision for a better Brockton, right? And I've said that from day one. Um, I met with Rick and, and, and and the DA and, and, and Manny Gomes uh, the day after I, uh, I, I, I named him as the, uh, the acting chief. Uh, and we had about a two hour meeting in the uh, DA's office and we talked about everything, best practices and how we could do it better. And what I will say is the DA's office does not need to be in the city of Brockton. It's not mandated, it could be anywhere in Plymouth County, but it chooses to be in the core of the city of Brockton. The state police doesn't need to be in the city of Brockton, but they choose to work in collaboration. It's a collaborative effort. Um, we're never gonna wipe out crime or violence in its entirety. It's just not gonna be practical, but we can minimize it, we can mitigate it, and we can work in a way that's gonna be an effective way to benefit the residents that we serve, the taxpayers, all of you that are here tonight. Um, so I wanna continue, if we could, um, Jay Farley from the uh, Massachusetts State Police. I'll be brief uh, and <clears throat> just want to <clears throat> advise you guys that uh, the state police, as uh, the mayor and uh, Rick have said, uh, we're dedicated to the city. We're right downtown. There are 20 of us. We have a homicide unit, drug unit. We also, the gang unit comes uh, who are not attached to our office, uniform patrol, the community action team. Um, we have a great working relationship with the Brockton Police, probably the best I've ever seen in my career on the state police with a local agency. They're great, they're true partners. Anything we do, they know about and vice versa. Uh, we are truly dedicated to the same goal that everybody here is. Um, and we're not just passing through. We, we are here, we're downtown. Half my family's buried at Calvary Cemetery and uh, I have family still left in the city. Uh, we're here, we're, we're ready, we're dedicated, we work well with everyone and uh, we're just, uh, that's, that's uh, our message is we are here and uh, we're ready, ready to do it. Full disclosure, Mr. Fowler is one of my favorite cousins. <laughs> so when he's talking about family buried at Calvary, it's my family as well. <laughs> and I know where I'm gonna be buried when at the end of the day. So I do thank the state police for what they're doing. Uh, Lieutenant Banaka from Brockton PD, please. Uh, welcome everyone, um, I'm Detective Lieutenant Paul Banaka, and I am uh, the head of the uh, Detective Division in the Brockton Police Department. I represent the Chief uh, today, he couldn't be here. But uh, some of the things that I'd like to talk about is exactly where we're headed. Obviously, uh, with uh, Mayor Sullivan, uh, it should be noted that um, you know, now, and, and probably never in, in history that I'm aware of, in my 25 years, we've had this many sworn personnel at the Brockton Police Department, which is about 193. And uh, I think only Councilor Farwell can attest that uh, uh, hitting the 200 mark was probably in the 80s, in the early 80s, with the amount of sworn officers. So uh, Mayor Sullivan has uh, gone forward with his promise to the public, and there are 14 that are going to be doing the academy. Uh, once the uh, background checks are cleared and some of the other uh, administrative uh, details. So the mayor has gone through with his promise to the public that uh, we're going to be hitting over 200 uh, Brockton police officers sworn personnel. And that's going to be a, uh, an advantage uh, to the public. 
And as I said, never in my 25 years has, have we hit that number. So what are the things that we're, uh, we're doing? So one of the things is we've increased our impact patrols. We've had, uh, on Fridays and Saturdays, they've been uh, two officers uh, from 8 to 12, uh, actually uh, uh, 8 to midnight, and then midnight to 4. We've increased that. Now there are going to be five uh, sworn officers between 8 and 12 and 12 to 4. That's going to be on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. So that's an increase in the impact patrols. Also the gang unit, over the weekend, we're going to be increasing their hours, also to include some daytime hours. As everybody uh, knows, and from uh, obviously uh, with the media, that we've seen an uptick in terms of uh, incidences happening during the daytime. So we've increased our gang unit patrols, especially this weekend coming up. Some of the things that, uh, uh, you know, obviously we, the relationships that we share with the uh, Massachusetts State Police, as you've heard, and also with the District Attorney's Office, probably no better relationship with the uh, state agencies and also with the DA's office. I'm on the phone daily uh, with uh, uh, ADA Joe Janizic about uh, putting forward charges on some of the individuals that we're focusing on. So um, some of the other things that we have, we have two liaisons to the FBI, Southeastern Massachusetts Gang Task Force. That's two detectives. We have, uh, we're in the process of having one detective assigned to the uh, ATF task force. That's the Southeastern Massachusetts Violent Crime Task Force. Also, uh, we have uh, two Brockton detectives assigned to the Massachusetts Fugitive Task Force, which uh, consists of two of our individuals, a uh, mass state trooper, and also a US marshal. And what they do is they develop leads, gather intelligence, and uh, track and apprehend uh, targeted fugitives. Also, uh, we have a detective assigned to the Office of the Attorney General Anti-Heroin Task Force, and that targets the sale, distribution, and trafficking in opiates. Drugs and uh, violence go hand in hand. Uh, the other uh, organization is uh, we have uh, a, a detective also assigned to the uh, Commonwealth Interstate Narcotics Reduction Enforcement Team. And uh, they identify, uh, investigate, and remove uh, threats to security in the city. And that includes uh, violent opioid traffickers. I want to remind everybody that this is, these are not random acts that you've been hearing about. There are, there are individuals that uh, we've been focusing on. Again, I, I can't speak about particular uh, investigations. We can't comment on that. But I think we're on the right track. Uh, the entire Detective Bureau, we're uh, prioritizing our resources. And that's to uh, encounter, investigate some of these uh, violent individuals. And I already see uh, some of the results uh, in terms of um, I expect that uh, we've rounded the corner and, and, and you'll see a reduction in uh, some of the violence that uh, you've been uh, hearing about. So I think with that, uh, I'll um, defer to the uh, mayor for the next introduction. Thank you very much, Lieutenant. And uh, I just kind of want to echo the sentiments of uh, what Paul stated. Um, just a few weeks ago, I was honored and privileged to participate in a swearing in of three new Brockton police officers, uh, three Cape Verdean individuals, uh, brave additions to the, uh, the men and women that serve. And then just last Friday, uh, 12 uh, new firefighters that graduated. We had a ceremony at the War Memorial. Uh, it was just a good day. We're adding to the base, right, of public safety. We're not subtracting from that base, and that's something we're going to do as long as I'm the mayor. Um, I do want to also share, we talked about shot spotter. I had a, a two-hour meeting today in the mayor's office uh, with two gentlemen that flew in from Washington, D.C., uh, and former chief and lieutenant uh, Steve Williamson from Brockton PD was in there uh, as well. Um, to, to do best practices. I want statistics. I'm a numbers guy, uh, and I was given that. We're going to have some follow-ups. We're going to have some stakeholder meetings. They're going to come back to Brockton as well. Um, want to see, you know, what tools we have in the toolbox that might even help uh, these, these brave people uh, in their endeavors, and ultimately it's going to help Brockton as a whole. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's a lot we're going to talk about tonight. Um, this isn't a one-off. I'm going to continue to have these discussions and conversation. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're all in this together. Brockton's all of our homes, so we need to make sure we have a safe home, a clean home, an economic thriving home. And as long as I have the honor and privilege to be the CEO of the mayor of the city of Brockton, we're going to do it the right way in a professional manner where people uh, share ideas, criticisms, suggestions to take it to the level that we all know and we all hope we can get there in the not-too-distant future. With that being said, my dear friend, Brockton High, 1988 graduate with myself and a uh, really great city councilor from Ward 7 and the council president, Shirley Azak. Thank, 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, good evening, everybody. So I'm going to be really brief. As um, as you know, city councils are available to you 24-7. Our phones are always, um, we answer our phones constantly. So on behalf of the full city council, I'm going to express to the, pu to the public, honestly, public safety is our number one concern. And um, as you've seen tonight, as it's the mayor's number one concern, it always has been when he was a city councilor, and it is now as he is mayor, and it is our, myself and my colleagues. That's safety is for our families, our friends, our neighbors, um, public safety, I, we can't express enough, we can't do enough. So the mayor is doing his best. The gentleman here, I can't say I don't know anything about, enough about law enforcement, but I know that my colleagues and myself are available to our public uh, via phone, email, reach out to us. If we can answer your questions, if we can't, then we will um, ask our professionals, our public safety officials to, an to get us answers so uh, we can keep you at ease. Um, I know as a resident of the city, what's important to me is that something's being done. I know some, what you hear in, in the news sometimes isn't reassuring, but I hope seeing everybody up here tonight is reassuring that we are doing something. And um, these aren't random, they are targeted, um, targeted shootings. And um, you know, we treat everybody, I, I consider everybody like I consider my own family, my kids. So I worry about your kids like I worry about my own. So I want you to know that the city council is doing everything they can on their end. And it is pretty much hiring more police officers. Um, as the mayor stated, we have more coming on and we need more on our streets. And Chief Gomes from day one when he um, was re appointed as chief, he, uh, you know, we had a meeting and he assigned two police officers to the city council to really communicate with us, to keep us updated. So I appreciate the communication, um, open lines of communication really across, across the board from the mayor's office to the city council, and of course to, to our schools um, educating our youth. So I can't express enough that you need to reach out to us. Call your city council, let them know what your concerns are, because that's what our job is. Our job is to be your voice, so please call us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council President. I do also want to recognize State Senator Michael Brady. Mike, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Oh, and the, the Dean of the Council, Ward 3 Council, Dennis Ianeri, thank you. I see you in the back, Council. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I just, I want to, uh, before Lieutenant uh, Frank Vidaro speaks, um, we always have to be uh, cognizant of the fact that we're in a small city, right? Brockton High School has over 4,000 students. When Shirley and I were here, it was over 5,000, right? Um, the uniqueness of the city of Brockton is we have a police, school police division. Right? It's unique. Not a lot of municipalities have that. Lieutenant Vidaro is in charge of that. Um, you know, they're doing Alice training, active shooter training. He can talk about it. But, you know, we're, we're being very, very proactive uh, here in the schools, not just at Brockton High, but throughout. Uh, and also, you know, I took a tour yesterday of, of, of New Heights, the charter school. Uh, a lot of students from Brockton. Last week it was Southeastern Regional with Lewis Lopes, superintendent. 65% of those kids are from the city of Brockton. So, um, you know, we're going to open it up soon once we finish. I want to hear from each and every one of you that want to speak. Uh, with that being said, uh, Lieutenant Vidaro, please. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Lieutenant Frank Vidaro. I'm a Brockton police officer. I'm also the commanding officer of the school police department. When I took over the school police department sometime around Thanksgiving of last year, we were just had five new police officers come out of the academy, school police officers, and integrated them into our ranks. So some of the things that I've done to try to mentor to our students, we're not there just to arrest or to charge. We are there to protect our students, to protect our teachers, our school officials. We're there to protect you, the public. That's our sworn duty. When they were, when they had come over, we invited the great training team down, and I had all of my officers certified as great instructors. That's gang resistance, education, and training. We've gone out to all the schools over the winter the first five or six elementary schools, we've gotten through all of the fifth grade classes. And they've graduated. We had a day for them down at the, the skating rink in Whitman. 
we will be doing the second half of the fifth grade students in the, well, we've begun it now and there's a couple of schools that are gonna be starting within the next couple of weeks. We've also implemented a Eagle shot detection system up in the high school itself. It's still under, you know, there's a couple of bugs to work out, but um, at some point, if somebody does, God forbid, enter this school and does shoot in the school, we'll know instantaneously where the shots are coming from and we'll be able to respond immediately, more so than if we were getting it second, third hand from 911 calls. Uh, we've also implemented the ALICE training program, which is basically nationwide. Uh, all of the teachers, all of the personnel, custodians, uh, food administration, um, the um, Micah Thomas and his, and, his, uh, and his people down at Central, they've all been certified as ALICE instructors. The second phase, we'll be, going, we'll be rolling that out soon once, once everybody, all the teachers are spoken to by their principals and they figure out a plan, game plan to educate the students in this training. And also, we'll be starting drills right after that. We'll be going to the schools and doing active drills. Just like fire drills, unfortunately, it's important to educate our children in the event that there may be an active shooter that enters the building. Uh, we've also uh, implemented a 911 radio system throughout all of the schools have a base radio that is directly tied to the Brockton Police Department and the Fire Department so that if an incident does occur, there's direct contact from any school directly to us. And we'll be, um, should be hiring maybe a couple more school police officers in the near future. We've also, uh, I've also got my guys to go into the schools. They're roaming all the schools. They're making their presence known. They're introducing themselves. They're sitting down with the children. You know, I, I want them mentoring to all of our students. I want them to be able to come to us and be able to sit down with us and, and tell us what's going on. We've also implemented home visits through a Shannon grant, working uh, with the Y and some of their personnel through Safe Corners. And what we do is we go out, some of the principals or guidance counselors, they will give us names of some of the students that they're worried about, some of the students that may be, um, may be getting actively involved in some, some activity that they maybe should be stayed away from. And we'll go out plain clothes, one of my SROs and one of the school police officers will go out in an unmarked car and we'll go and outreach to the family and try to offer them services. And, and it's been, we've gotten rave reviews by some of the parents. Um, and there's been quite a few that have taken us up on these outreach programs. So that being said, I can, I'm kind of, this was what, uh, when I first came in tonight, I, I didn't realize I was going to be up here. So I was kind of off the, off the cuff here. So I'll turn Thank it back you. to the mayor. Thank you very much, Lieutenant. And, and listen, um, we, we have to train worst case scenario, right? We have to do that. And it's, it's just society now. And if we don't, we're shirking our duties as, as leaders and as, as educators, as law enforcement as elected officials, so we are doing that. And I thought it was really, uh, really important to have Lieutenant Vitaro come up here tonight. Um, you know, not everybody is a parent of a Brockton public school student, but rest assured that we, if you are, your kids are gonna be safe. Um, and, and, you know, we need to do that. And, you know, he talks about collaboration with the YMCA. I mean, Vinnie Matarano, Executive Director of the Y's here tonight. He doesn't need to be here, but thank you for being here. You know, Laura Street's from the Charity Guild. She doesn't need to be here, she's here. You know, a lot of clergy. I'm looking at a lot of clergy out here. Um, and business owners and people that really care. And that's what makes Brockton, Brockton, right? It's the people. It's the number one asset in the city of Brockton. It's the folks that live here. So um, we're going to continue right now with Deputy Chief uh, uh, Joe Solomon from Brockton Fire Department, please. Good evening. I've been on the fire department for 25 years. I'm up here tonight representing Chief Williams in the Brockton Fire Department and EMS uh, Brewster. Uh, as the fire department, we've always worked great with the police department, and we will always do that. Um, we're the ones that respond to these violent incidents, and we we see the devastation that it does to the families, uh, the police department, and the fire personnel as well. Uh, we don't just leave that stuff at the scene. It goes home with you, um, and it takes a toll. But we're going to continue to do it because that's our job. And um, like I said, in the past, we've always worked great with the police. We're involved in the active shooter. Deputy Marchetti trains the guys. Unbelievable. Um, we have trauma kits. 
to, to help violent crimes, shootings. You know, we're going to go there and do the best we can to help both the victim and the criminal. Uh, and we'll continue to do, to do that. Uh, we have six stations around the city, as most of you know. The response time is the key, and that's why we get to calls within four minutes usually. And that makes a big difference in saving lives. So between the police, fire, EMS, we're all there to help everybody. And um, we're going to continue to do that the best we can. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. That being said, I'm going to open it up to the general public. That's why you're here, and we want to hear from you. Again, there's a mic there. There's a mic there. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, the, mics, the mics are open. Good evening. Good evening. Richard Wind. And uh, I might be mistaken. And so, first of all, what you people laid out there is very impressive. I certainly wouldn't have known, you know, what is going on if I didn't attend tonight. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's nice to know that we're not standing pat. Um, when uh, Mayor Carpenter was mayor, there was a, uh, I think he brought a gentleman in, his name was Hayden, uh, for a period of time. And one of the things that they did is they went after the drug dealers. You know, um, they either need to be out of this city by being arrested or they need to be uh, out of this town. You know, and um, as, as far as I see, you know, we really need to proactively go after these people and, and get it so that the source of the drugs is not out there, you know, which is going to protect the children, etc., and also contribute to the lessening of the violence. I just want to get an idea as to, and again, I understand if you have active cases, et cetera, but I, I want to get an idea as to what this city is doing to go, to aggressively go after these drug dealers um, at all levels so, so that this becomes less of a problem or at least is under, you know, as much of a control as it can be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wynn. What I can say is the mayor, I've sat in a lot of, a lot of conversations about this, and let's just think where, where Brockton is located on Route 24. All right, a lot of these folks are coming to the city of Brockton from the city of Boston, coming down here. They're either stopping in Randolph or stopping in Brockton, going down to Fall River, New Bedford to get the drugs and coming back. Uh, that's not 100%. We have some homegrown issues here in Brockton. You know, rest assured, I'm not naive to that fact. But what I can say is, in my conversations with Chief Crowley, um, Chief Williamson, Chief Gomes, uh, Chief Williams, uh, all the deputy chiefs, the DA's office, the stateies. There's a collective effort to be professional, be productive, and really bring hell on these people in a way that is going to deter them from doing activities in the city of Brockton. I want them out of the city of Brockton. I want them out. But I, I know that we have to do it in a lawful manner. Right? I know exactly. I was the city council president when, when uh, Chief Hayden was here. Um, you know, I, I think there's uh, mechanisms that we can do that um, people are realizing uh, not to do activities in the city of Brockton. Uh, the fact that you can go away for a long, long time on the federal level versus the state is a true detriment uh, if, you're a, if you're a criminal. Uh, full disclosure, one of my sisters is an assistant U.S. attorney, and uh, she came to street, Safe Streets, and she shared that with everybody that was there. What I do want to see is I'd like to see more people at those meetings as well. We want to add, add, add to that. Um, but I concur with you, you know, and I mean, you and I have talked. You're my neighbor. We've talked about it. We need to have a safer community, um, and, and these are the people, you know, that can, can work to make that a reality. Uh, it is going to take time. We do need to reach the 200 plus for Brockton PD. We also have to be creative on how we utilize our resources. You know, um, one thing that the city council has done is, uh, you know, I was there 14 years and the council there now uh, always supports law enforcement and fire and public safety. We have five new cruisers coming online for Brockton PD. That's a good thing. Shot spotter was a good thing. That was an original grant from the U.S. Attorney's Office, but subsequently the city of Brockton, Mayor Carpenter and Mayor Rodriguez supported it. I'm going to support that. It makes sense. Um, I don't know if anybody else wants to pine on that at all, but um, I know that there's a collective efforts from 
you know, the, the FBI that is based in Lakeville, they're here in Brockton, you know, the Stades, uh, the DA, Brockton PD, um, Brockton police here in the schools, and um, that's all I can say. I don't know if you want to say anything, attorney. I, I would just add, and, and I thought that question was, got to the heart of why yeah. we're here. Yeah. A um, couple of points. First, you, you, you should know, uh, and I can assure you, that proactive drug investigations, not just happenstance drug arrests, but proactive drug investigations are ongoing at all times. Oftentimes in collaboration with federal law enforcement, always in collaboration with the Brockton Police and the State Police. But those initiatives, those endeavors are always going on. And secondly, I would add, and we would say this at every Safe Streets meeting that, that we've had, we, don't, we cannot do it alone. Everyone's here because they care about the city, that's for sure. If you have information about what's going on in your neighborhood, on your street, what you're seeing, you need to let us know as well. Uh, it assists us, it provides us with uh, intelligence that allows us and enables us to do our jobs better. But rest assured, at all times, investigations are ongoing, at all times initiatives are being undertaken, uh, and uh, joint collaborative efforts are being made um, uh, to get at uh, the drug trafficking in the city, and not just the ad hoc happenstance arrests. Uh, there are proactive missions going on at all times. Thank you, Attorney Savignan. I also want to share this to everybody out there. I, when I met with the DA and, and Rick and, and Manny Gomes, I said, listen, we, we can address, you know, the issues that are before us now, but I also don't want to forget about issues that have happened from the past, right? We learn from the past to better our future. The unsolved murder of Kyle Yancey when he was hit and struck on Belmont Street is a wrong that needs to be addressed. The DA's office is still looking at that. Cold cases in Brockton, they're not going cold. They can't. It's not right to the families that lost the loved ones. So we can talk about gun violence, but we also have to look at things that happened in the past, uh, and we need to address those, you know? Um, I know Ollie Spears is here tonight, and, and I met Ollie when he was a member of our, our positive posse. Right, that was recognized by the President of the United States. We need to learn from that to better our future. It's the building block for success, right? But I just want to know that, I want you all to know that I'm having daily conversations with everybody up here, right? And my team, they're not my employees, my staff, they're my team members are doing the same thing in the mayor's office, and it's an open door policy. That's the only way that, you know, I want to, want to rock and roll as, as the mayor. We need to do it that way together. So. I don't know if anybody else wants to answer uh, that question or if the attorney covered it, but I know you, you generally, you've been kind to stand there, so please, the floor is yours. Oh. Thank you, thank you all for your service. Um, I wanted to ask in regard to uh, illicit commerce, um, are there any developments going on in regard to uh, economic development uh, to deter people from illicit commerce? Yeah, I mean, economic development in, in Brockton, that's really the pinnacle. Um, in terms of Brockton, right, and I said this before, the, the number one asset is definitely the citizens, right? But under Mayor Carpenter, the late Mayor Bill Carpenter, um, he had a wonderful relationship uh, with Karen Polito and, and Governor Baker, right? It was $150 million invested downtown. Uh, one of the things that I did when I was elected mayor, I asked our state delegation, and the reason that Claire Cronin and, and Michelle Dubois and Jerry Cassie aren't here tonight, they all reached out to me, is they're in session tonight at the State House. Um, but they set up meetings, and I, I met with Karen Polito, I, I met with the House Speaker, I met with the President, thank you, Mike, I met with K President Spilk of the Senate. We need that train that Bill was doing to continue down the track, right? We need economic investment and development. And I will say this, what people are telling me as the new mayor-elect is, Brockton's poised for greatness. We have three commuter stops, 35 minutes in to get into the South Station, right? Young professionals are coming to Brockton. They're not spending the money for Quincy, Braintree, Dorchester, Southie, Charlestown. They can't, so they're coming to Brockton. We need to capitalize on that. We need to build our base. Um, so to answer your question, economic development is definitely coming. Um, the city council is supporting that as well. Thank you. Um, I also was uh, re re uh, referring to entrepreneurship opportunities. Um, like I know at one time, uh, 
The South Shore area was a large fishing port. There's been lots of federal regulations and state regulations in regards to fishing. Um, you know, uh, a lot of times the, the rent is expensive. There's not rent control. People need to pay their bills. So oftentimes they resort to these um, activities. Um, I, I'm speaking in regard to maybe having an incubator or something along those lines. You know, if a guy fishes and gets five fish a day, you know, he could pay his rent. Um, I'm saying something along those lines. I, um, but I know what you're saying in regard to career opportunities as well, and also um, having career opportunities for the youth and um, just kind of bridging that gap. Yeah, and it's funny you talked about New Bedford. I met with, I just went down to New Bedford the other day and had lunch with John Mitchell, the mayor down there. And again, um, I think Brockton blows New Bedford away in terms of uh, where we are. We're not on a coastal community, right? Um, but we're a gateway city uh, with, with really great potential. Um, in terms of um, making sure that the youth and the educated young of Brockton stays in Brockton is paramount, right? The graduating from Brockton Public Schools, right, or Cardinal Spelman or Southeastern, and then many times they're leaving the city of Brockton. We want them to stay in Brockton and, and really put roots down here. Um, there, there's a lot of um, um, different mechanisms that the state office and, and the state delegation is helpful on that. Um, but quite honestly, um, we need to continue our wonderful relationship. We have a great superintendent of schools, Mike Thomas, right? Um, he's a product, class 87 here from Brockton High. But without the conversation like what you're saying right now, it's the sharing of ideas and even criticisms, right? That's how Brockton's going to move forward from an economic standpoint, education standpoint, and future growth, right? I mean, I got three young kids. I'm doing it for them. I'm not doing, I don't need to be mayor. I'm doing it for the younger generation. So. Um, I'd like to talk to you offline, too. I think you have some good ideas. I'd like to trade with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here tonight, too. Good evening. This thing is stuck. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you for speaking tonight, all of you. Um, I'm a substance abuse counselor. My name is Bruce Burles, and I live here in Brogdon over on the east side. And I'm a director over at uh, South Bay Community Services. I know that the mayor came and visited the week after he was inaugurated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you guys are talking about gun violence, violence, uh, drug dealing, and all of that. But uh, one of the things I've learned over the years from working in the field is that the drug trade is about supply and demand. I mean, it's not just about the fact that there are people dealing drugs on the street, because we see plenty of that going on. It's also the fact that people are buying and using the drugs. So I think we need to approach it from two different angles. I mean, we need to get the drug dealers off the street and deal with that and put more cops on the street. I'm absolutely for all of that, but I'd also like to know what are we doing to move forward the agenda of helping people who are addicted to these drugs to get off the drugs? So. In past administrations, when a, a man or a woman is elected mayor, they wipe out the staff of the previous mayor. <laughs> that just happens. For me, I thought that was short-sighted to do that. I said, there's people here that are skilled professionals. Corin Capiello is one of those skilled professional people. She was hired under Belzotti. She stayed with Cop and Rodriguez. She's definitely staying with me. Um, you know, I'm not an expert in social service or, 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 or mental health issues. But there's a lot of root causes, right? Um, but, but you know, the illegal and legal drug problem, it's an epidemic, it's a tsunami. Mm -hmm. Young, old, gay, straight, white, black, they're dying, right? So as a community, what we need to do is we need to come up with education, right? And a true, true mechanism to try to, we're not gonna cure it all, but to try to, to come with a compassionate approach that is gonna help people and save lives. So, you know, what I can say out of my team in the mayor's office with Corin, I came to you, um, you know, I've come to as many social services agencies that I could go to thus far. I took a tour of Father Bills. Um, there's, there's, there's a relationship that needs to blossom from your expertise, the expertise that's up here as well, and I'm just kind of the middleman that will help manage it. But at the end of the day, if we don't do it, we're going to fail, and we can't afford to fail. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bree Nichols. I am the founder of Resilient Rose Respite Corps. Um, I am here today just to kind of see where 
we were going as a city. Um, I appreciate your mission of generativity because uh, teamwork makes the dream work. It's so cliche, but like uh, <laughs> it good. minimizes the workload but doubles the success of any team. Um, and with that being said, I think uh, the success of our youth is where we really need to focus. Um, not to say that, you know, the adults in the community aren't valuable, but who is going to lead us hereafter? It's our children. Um, and I think that we need to be more of a collaborative um, as a city. I've encountered a lot of issues uh, with trying to seek out assistance, support, and mentorship for myself uh, in reference to trying to guide the youth. Um, I was homeless for several years. I was uh, a resident at the Ruth House when it burned down. Uh, I also banded together with the Century of Care Alliance to raise over $105,000 for girls who were transitioning out of the shelter, as I did myself. Um, however, there is a blockage um, between what this gentleman here said and entrepreneurship and being able to seek out the resources that are appropriate to you know, find someone who's gonna tell you, here's how I did it without you crashing and burning throughout the process. Um, so I've now established after just uh, coming into your office on Friday, I met with a gentleman named George Brickhouse who uh, was coming to meet with you as well. Um, and pretty much I was looking for how do I become a nonprofit because I had some students who wanted to volunteer their services to do community outreach and help support those in need. I had been taking donations over the Christmas holiday and donating it back to the shelters, but these kids weren't getting their hours of community service accounted for because I wasn't nonprofit which I rectified that issue after Friday coming into your office. I spoke with the gentleman up there, forgive me for not remembering his name, but he was very instrumental in you know, telling me, hey, mayor's got an open door process. So I'm here to see what the city of Brockton can do for entrepreneurs as well as putting my mission out there of I'm trying to create a structured and safe environment for youth to utilize their time, not just to, you know, for working, but to give back to others, to understand the importance of camaraderie. Because I think as we, as a community, have kind of gone off and everybody wants to be independent, we forget about the community as a whole. So I think um, I'm here to mostly tell you guys that, hey, there is somebody here, like Safe Corners or like the YMCA, that is looking for adults who are you know, well-rounded and want to mentor these kids, as well as you know, children who are looking for something to do. We lack a lot of recreation in Brockton. Someone posed the question to me, which got me to this business, is what would you have needed as an at-risk youth in the community? Something to do, something to structure my time. While I was in ROTC or on you know, Color Guard, I was fine. When those things went away, you know, I, <laughs> fair to say, uh, I don't mind as a devil's playground. Uh, but to say the least, I'd like to uh, ask for support from your office as well as the people in the community of Brockton to um, further my mission to help the youth. First of all, thank you. First of all, thank you for what you're doing. Um, John Massey is the gentleman in my office that, that Sorry you, you're talking to. No, 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 no. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's a good team member and uh, Marine. So thank you for your service too, John. Um, you know, what, what we can do as a community, um, we need to, to make change, make positive change, offer stuff that doesn't exist. Absolutely. So, so the Seed Corporation uh, mentors young entrepreneurs. Okay. The Brockton Partnership is a, um, a group of highly respected professionals, banking and law and business. We can take best practices with those people, those men and women that have succeeded, because exactly what you said, it's the next generation, right? So I coach, I'm the worst coach out there, right? <laughs> but I coach basketball, baseball, and soccer. And we, my team lost the playoffs, Brockton Community School, last Saturday, okay? So when I went to the charter school yesterday, they're introducing me as Mayor Sullivan, and two people said, no, that's Coach Sullivan. That meant more to me than anybody recognized me as a mayor, <laughs> because I made an impact. Maybe not a good impact, because we lost. <laughs> but I do think this, listen, everybody around here has different skills right, that we need to work off of. And if we do that, first of all, you and your experiences, you can help people younger than you. 
right? So Brockton Public Schools has offerings. What I learned last night in the school committee members, we had school committee last night, you know, there's a synergy and a relationship with Brockton um, here at the high school and the YMCA for expected moms or moms that already had babies that want to continue their education. I didn't know the statistics, right, but the offerings there are unbelievable and, 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 and Joyce and Tony can, can, can agree with that and Mark, I mean, it was, it was awe inspiring, it was awesome. I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. I am meeting with George, another coach. He's a good coach. Um, but without, you know, the conversation, and you're entering, you know, the conversation tonight, we can't do what needs to be done. And I'll give you another quick example. Um, I mentioned this person earlier, but um, Laura Streis, who works for Charity Guild, mentioned to me that there's a percentage of homeless uh, in the Brockton Public Schools. And as a 14-year city council, I never knew the number, and it's a high number. I was one. And I never knew that. And when I went to Father Bill's in Mainspring and I took the tour, there's homeless people that go to Brockton, uh, to Bridgewater State University. Um, you know, we as a community and we as elected officials need to uh, face reality, you know, don't push it aside, head on, take it on, address it, make sure we can um, offer support. Um, and, and I will say that you know, it's the conversation that's going to take us to where I want to see us go, and I think everybody here wants to go. So thank you, and I'll Absolutely. give you my card afterwards. Thank you. And the council president might want to pine. I just would like to add a few things. Um, first of all, North Middle School has become a community. There's a community center that was um, collaboration between the school a department and a, a group uh, head on by um, Ollie Spears and one of our own city councilors, Tina Cardoso. So if you want to get more information, uh, they're taking applicants, that's uh, totally free. There's no charge for, the, for that. So that's at North Middle School. And then the Chamber of Commerce, we have an award-winning Chamber of Commerce that's available to you. A lot of professionals there. So if you are an entrepreneur or you want to um, get any kind of information or programs. A lot of the programs come through the state, so they might have that information for you, and if they don't, they'll tell you who to contact. So um, that's right next to City Hall on School Street, and that's, op I believe they used to have a little space that was open to the public. You can go view or talk to uh, professionals there, so uh, view like books on different professions. Okay. okay, I appreciate the feedback. Thank you, Thank you all. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ruth Zacharin, and I am the Executive Director of the Massachusetts Coalition to Prevent Gun Violence, and I am glad to be here with all of you this evening. Yay! <laughs> Prior to coming on board with the coalition, and I want to tell you just a little bit about who we are and what we do and why I'm glad to be here this evening. I worked at Family and Community Resources here in Brockton for many years with survivors of domestic and sexual violence. And I come to the work of gun violence prevention because I've done so much work with survivors of violence and trauma, including survivors of domestic violence who are very much dealing with the intersection of domestic violence and guns. And I wanted to come and be here with all of you this evening. I care about the community of Brockton. I was here for a long time. But also our job as a statewide coalition is to represent communities most impacted by gun violence. And we do that work in a number of different ways. We have a strong presence at the State House. We want to talk with decision makers about what we can do to strengthen our laws and advocate for budget line items that support violence prevention. And we want to make sure that we're representing the needs of communities like Brockton when we have those conversations. And part of our role is also to raise awareness about best practices for violence prevention, uh, programs that address root causes of violence, um, and provide opportunities for youth, that, as we've been talking about, to ensure that young people have access to what they need so that they have other opportunities besides engaging in violence. And I introduce myself because I'd like to start a longer conversation about what we as a coalition can do to support the Brockton community and also support the amazing prevention work and violence intervention work that's already happening here in the city. So thank you for your time tonight. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you. Good evening. Hello, my name is Vanessa Jean Baptiste. I am a resident of Brockton. I've lived there my whole life. I am actually opening a business in Brockton. I am one of the few people that were accepted by Moses Rodriguez as an economic empowerment to open a marijuana shop. 
Now, my questions I want to add on to the fellow brother that was here earlier that spoke about entrepreneurship. When it comes to the marijuana business, the state actually recognized Brockton as one of the cities that have been disproportionately affected by the marijuana laws. So they made a program that social equity people, even though they haven't, like anyone that has been affected by the marijuana laws can open a business. So what I want to know is, I know retail is already like a rat race right now. I'm already in the process and I'm going in front of the state um, tomorrow to get my provisional license. So I should be open within uh, probably this year, maybe next year, but I should be opening soon. My thing is, coming soon is delivery and social consumption. Now, with delivery, it's not as much money as retail or cult cultivation. So when it comes to marijuana, are you going to start the process with deliveries or social consumption so people can, that have been affected, can at least open a business and steer away from the black market? Yeah, I mean, all I can say is that um, I chaired the ordinance committee um, when we vetted it out, the process of marijuana, and we spent a lot of time on that. Um, and the city council ultimately has the final say on who gets licensing. Uh, that's for recreational. Um, you know, Mayor Carpenter and Mayor Rodriguez did host agreements, and the Cannabis Control Commission will, well, Cannabis Control Commission will determine that. Um, and so I know your case very well. I do also know um, that we have a great um, bunch of lawyers in the law department solicitor's office that are working right now. Um, so, you know, I can't tell you yes, I can't tell you no. I know that they're charged um, as the solicitor's office um, to execute, but ultimately there'll be a process in place. Um, the ordinance committee is chaired this year by Ward 1 Councilor of Tim Cruz, appointed by, of course, the council president. So there is a process, and, and under our legislative uh, laws, there has to be uh, a process in place in terms of how ordinances are passed on the books for the city of Brockton. Okay. Thank you. And thank you Thanks. for your investment in Brockton, too. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm New Barretto. I am a teacher. Um, just want to, um, not really a question, but more of a suggestion. Um, the last couple of years, I worked um, kind of all over the country on policing. I worked with, um, with Commissioner Gross, um, spoke to many families around the country that were affected by policing. Just my suggestion in general, I know um, Minnie goes to be a fine person, and, and I want to thank you for putting this event on. This is really community, this is community policing right here, the community part. But I really think it's important for the next chief to make sure that he is um, in the public. I think it improves morale. Uh, one thing I learned from Commissioner Gross from Boston is that being out there in the community sends a big message to the community that, you know what, law enforcement really cares. Can they solve every problem? Absolutely not. But just being visual at different public events on a consistent basis, I think it really proves a big message that, you know what, we care about you, we know what's going on, and we're going to really continue to try to do solutions. So just in general, um, just in the next, um, I, I, you know, during the summertime, what have you, any public event, I think it's important to really have the leader of our police department visual and there on, on a consistent basis. And I know may need to be a, a really fine person, spoke to him many times, but just a suggestion going forward. Newby, first of all, if you don't know Newby, he's an uh, Emmy Award winning talent from the city of Brockton. So, so one thing that I, uh, I did when I spoke to Chief Gomes is I said exactly what you said. We need much more visibility. Uh, he appointed two Brockton PD to be the liaisons, as Shirley said, to the city council. Uh, we were invited by Phyllis Ellis, president of the NAACP, to appear at Messiah Baptist. I said, we're going. Uh, Ernie Bell was there as well. Uh, and, and you know what? Um, that's going to happen. It has to happen. Um, he wouldn't be the person that I would point if it doesn't happen. Um, so thank you again, Nubi, and uh, get us another Emmy, will you? I am, um, Nubi, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something nice about you. <laughs> uh, I, um, 
I wholeheartedly agree with the mayor. Uh, I've lived in the city my whole life, and I don't think I've come across anyone as impressive or as accomplished as Newby is on issues of relevance uh, to communities like Brockton. I urge all of you, and he didn't pay me to say this, to, to watch his documentaries. Mm. They're thoughtful, uh, they're relevant, they're accurate, um, they're thought-provoking. Um, and I agree 1,000% with the point he made about engagement with the community. And it goes not just for the police, which I know do a, a tremendous amount of work in that. It goes equally as well for my office. And we are engaged in, and are doing everything that we can to be engaged in the community. Um, I, I couldn't agree more with what you said. Uh, and again, I urge everyone, if, you ha if you're not familiar with his work, become familiar with his work. It's outstanding. Uh, and. Uh, a tremendous resource for our community and someone that we're all enormously proud of. Thank you. I, uh, so one of the, the fun things I get to do as mayor uh, is to appoint members, to volunteers, to boards, right, commissions and boards. And I was uh, proud to put two names forward the other night that the city council recommended favorable. One was the former police chief and former Ward Fork city councilor Paul Stadensky to the, and also to the license commission and the other individual was Nubi Rato to the Cable Advisory Board. Uh, he started at Brockton Cable, and uh, hopefully he's going to be there a long time. So thank you for stepping up for your volunteerism as well. Um, we'll go over here and then followed by you. Sir. Hello, my name is Christopher Lovatier. I am a longtime resident of Brockton since 1969. I am also a veteran, having joined the service at the age of 18, served for four years, I was awarded an expert marksmanship ribbon for the M16. I know my weapons, I know how to handle them. After I was discharged, three years after being discharged at the age of 25, I was mugged in Brockton with a, at gunpoint. Now, I disarmed that mugger because he didn't know that I was trained in martial arts and that I was a serviceman who swore to preserve and protect the citizens of this country. I never gave up that oath. Okay. That being said, when that gun was pointed in my face, and I looked at that little punk, and I said, how did he get that weapon? Who gave him that weapon? We did. We did that. Every single gun used in every single crime was originally purchased legally under the protection of the Second Amendment. Now, I'm not against the Second Amendment, but let's, let's be clear about where the problem lies. It isn't a mental health issue. It's a gun issue. These people are being shot by guns. These guns are being unleashed on our children in the schools, okay? And we do nothing on the national level after Sandy Hook. It's shameful as a veteran to see that. We do nothing. Now, nothing will ever get done nationally because the gun industry has our politicians in their back pocket, okay? The only way we can fight this is at the local level, and that's why I'm here tonight to fight this on the local level. And I'm hoping that we can do this as a team, as a community. I have my doubts through my experiences trying to get this done in the past decades that I've been fighting this battle. Okay. In 1968, bear with me, I have important information. It won't take me long. I've rehearsed this speech. Ten minutes, I promise you, is the most I'll stand here. In 1968, they passed the Gun Control Act. That was in response, a national response to the assassinations of JFK, MLK, and RFK in, in the 60s. That was a response. And as a result, we required gun manufacturers to engrave serial numbers on guns so that we could track the provenance of a gun back to its original source. On its inception, it was easily defeated by criminals by simply engraving off the serial numbers. Easily defeated it, suddenly we have to deal with illegal guns, 
okay? I am here with good news. There is a new technology called micro stamping. Raise your hands if you're familiar with micro stamping technology. Nobody. Okay. Micro stamping is a ballistics identification technology. Microscopic markings are engraved onto the tip of the firing pin and onto the breech face of a firearm with a laser. When the gun is fired, these etchings are transferred to the primer by the firing pin and to the cartridge case head by the breech face of the gun. After being fired, if the cases are recovered by the police, the microscopic markings imprinted on the cartridges can then be examined by forensic ballistic experts to help trace the firearm to the last registered owner. This technology allows police to trace the exact providence of a gun directly back to the original gun owner. This would virtually eliminate the straw purchase ability of criminals. Thank you. Okay. In 2013, the state of California passed a law requiring the use of micro stamping technology in all new semi automatic firearms sold in the state. In response, the NRA sued. On June 28th, 2018, the California Supreme Court upheld the law. The two major gun manufacturers in the U.S. announced that they would no longer sell new handguns in California. That's progress, people. That's what we want. That's what we need in Massachusetts. Let's stop selling these guns that are only identified by engraved serial numbers. Let's help law enforcement do their job. Let's hold gun owners accountable for securing their weapons properly and not profiting in straw purchases. That's enough said about micro stamping. I encourage all of you to look it up. Look it up anywhere you can on Google. Wikipedia has information. Look for all you can do to, to fight for stronger gun control. It's the only way to solve this problem. All right, one more issue, and this is it. I'm sure these officers are on, uh, on the panel here are familiar with Mass General Law 140 that requires all individuals who sell, transfer, inherit, or lose their firearm to report it to the Firearms Record Bureau. If they don't, they're in violation of the law. Now, what I, like, I would like the mayor to ask law enforcement people, you don't have to do it tonight, but please write this down, to ask them, what are they doing to ensure that the firearms of a dead gun owner are being transferred properly to a licensed gun owner? Imagine this. A father has a gun. He's a legal gun owner, but he has a son who's a gang member. That's his only relative. He dies. The son gets all his possessions. Law enforcement is not knocking on the door to say, hello, did, did you, um, what did you do with that gun? That isn't happening. It's a gaping hole locally, right here in Brockton. Chris, what I'll, what I'll, first of all, just for full disclosure, I, I, during the campaign, I met with Chris at Alexander's. He gave me some really good information. I never heard of Mayor Bloomberg and Mayor Menino created. It's called the Mayor's Alliance Against Illegal Drugs, uh, get Illegal Guns. Uh, I didn't know it existed. Uh, Chris brought it to my attention. I'm going to be joining as the Mayor of Brockton. No mayor has ever done it. Marty Walsh from Boston has. So he's very passionate. He's a, a lot of information. Uh, I'll definitely follow up on that, Chris. I know you and I have been exchanging. We're trying to get together again. 
Um, I also know that you were a, a good investor downtown when you had your, your, uh, your magic business downtown as well. Um, you know, and, and you have a lot of information that I'd love to continue. Um, I, I'll talk offline sure. with these individuals, uh, but I know there's some other folks that want to speak as well tonight. Absolutely. Uh, but I do, I truly th appreciate your Those passion. are two, two issues, and when you have a follow-up meeting, I will be coming back to find out and calling you on the carpet if you yeah. haven't done anything. Yeah. Well, you got I my cell number too, so you yes, can call me I, anytime. I, I will say one more thing. You have a bully pulpit, okay? Every time there's a gun shooting in Brockton, you get interviewed by the paper. At that time, you should Not be... Not the Brockton Enterprise. They don't like me, so they don't interview right, me too right, much. Right. No, no. You rub elbows with a lot of people in state government, uh, Mayor Sullivan, a lot. And when you have their attention, you have their ear, I would like you to be calling for laws insisting on micro-stamping technology on these guns. It doesn't violate anybody's rights to own a gun. It gives us the power to regulate them, though. I thank you all for your thank time. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, good evening. Good afternoon, or should I say good evening, too. <laughs> My name is Jimmy J.L. Valentin. I am a resident of Brockton. I've been living in Brockton since September 13, 2000. That's the day I was born. I am scared because I am a young 19, about to be 20-year-old kid. How am I supposed to feel when I walk into the beautiful city not knowing if a gun is going to go flying through my head or a bullet. Not knowing that one day I have to wake up to a, a news saying that mass shooting happened here in Brockton. I'm afraid, and God forbid that ever happens, ladies and gentlemen, God forbid. I'm a young, intelligent, not so bright, <laughs> but man that is here now speaking to you all. I, I graduated in the class of 2019 in Southeastern Regional. I took two years of criminal justice there I know the basics of law, constitution, and everything. I am here today to ask you, Robert Sylvia Sullivan, oh, like I said, <laughs> not well, <laughs> Madam President and professionals of the um, P um, Brockton PD, what are we going to do with our kids when they hear the news that, hey, there has been a shot fire across from the Brockton High or across from Southeastern, even though that's not our jurisdiction? But what we're gonna do? Are we gonna stand by and just let it happen? No, we need to take actions. We are Brockton citizens. We are a city of champions. We basically won many basketball tournaments, soccer tournaments, baseball. We can do this together. We can put our backs into it because in the end of the day, we can all agree that Brockton comes first, our children comes first. My sister is a class of 2021. She's about to graduate soon. I got two cousins that's going to Brockton High. I got a cousin that got to go to Southeastern too. Do you think I would love to hear the news that says, hey, something happened there? No, no, please, please. Because I pray every day the members that we elected you, I voted for you, Robert Sylvia. I voted for you, man. I believe in you. Thank I you. I swear I believe in you. And Do I it hope. again in two years, will you? Thank uh, you. I don't know. We'll see about that. <laughs> but I will. If I have to vote for you again just to get change, I will. Ask yourself this, what are we going to do when our kids, when they walk into these beautiful doors of education? Because education is our passport to the future. Our opportunities is lined here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take action. I know it's not enough, you know, enough people here to fill up the seats, right? But there are good about 50 or 40 people here who show that they want Brockton to be fixed. I am here today as a young student who is a political man. I'm a politician, ladies and gentlemen. In two, in two years, I am going to run for Brockton. I am just going to. Just don't run for mayor, OK? <laughs> OK, I got you that, but you got to give right. me some money. <laughs> no, but listen, first of all, the fact that you're a 19-year-old, I wouldn't have come here at 19. I wouldn't have. But let me tell you a couple things. Number one, uh, I'm a dad of three young kids, right? My brother, Ryan, who's five years younger, lives in Newtown, Connecticut, OK? He knows parents that put their kids on a bus, that went to school, those kids didn't come home. He shares those stories. God forbid that ever happens. I went to D.C. and I met with Nan Whaley. She is the mayor of Dayton. We know there was a mass shooting in Dayton. And what Mayor Whaley said is, Bob, you have to prepare for the worst. It's a different society now. The days of a fist fight behind the schoolyard are gone. They're gone. So, so what I can say is, I know Lieutenant wants to pile on as well, I hear you. We're all in this together. We have to think worst case scenario, but we also have to think best practices to make sure that the young are safe in our society. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you for your comments. And uh, representing the police department, I have to say, and, and just to echo the mayor, that the biggest resource that the city has are the residents of the city. Now, you have to understand that there's 100,000 people in this city, plus or minus. We're talking about the problems of probably about 3%, 2%. Unfortunately, some of those, some of that 2%, it's a revolving door, in and out of jail to courts and, and whatnot. And, uh, and that's a real issue. But you can be rest assured that that 2%, and as I said, 98% of this city, great citizens, a powerful resource for the city. In the police department, we're trying to do the best we can to, to actually identify, target, and investigate individuals, and that's in that 2%. And that's not the 98%, that's in the 2%. And all of our resources, I can tell you in the Detective Bureau, everything's dropped, and everything, as I said, everything is dropped in order to focus on those individuals that are giving us the hardest time, that are giving you, the citizens, the hardest time. And you can be rest assured, I think we've rounded a corner. I can't talk about uh, current investigations, but with our the federal and our state partners, uh, we're making some inroads and there are going to be some conclusions in the future that I believe are going to be positive. And our goal, we are part of this community. And we're looking to see that it becomes a safer community. Even though we can never be 100%, we're always trying to get to 100%. And uh, one shooting is one shooting too many. So as I said, I'd like to echo the, the mayor's comments, and that's uh, that would uh, Basically, uh, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate sure, it. Sure. Um, I know I'm just going to wrap up it up so I can give other people some time. I just want to say I hope I see change, ladies and gentlemen. I hope I see change because in the end of the day, I'm a young Latino kid, 19 years old. I don't see not a young person here. Graduated high school. Let's work together to end crime in our neighborhood. Let's work together to bring community watches as well. Let's work together, ladies and gentlemen. I hope in two years when you see my name on a ballot, I don't know what, I'll surprise you guys. <laughs> we can all work together, you and me or anyone, because at the end is here and it's time to end change. God bless us all and let's hope together as a city champion we can end gun violence, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Good evening, Mayor. I'm a business owner in the city of Brockton. Thank you for putting on this forum and everyone on the panel. I do have some pointed questions. Uh, Lieutenant Banaka, you mentioned impact patrols. Just wanted to know, in fact, what that, that means. Well, impact, impact patrols, we have extra patrols out, and that, uh, that was increased, as I had said earlier. So uh, we have a, a minimum staffing, and, it's, uh, and what we're doing is uh, Prior to uh, this year, it was uh, basically it was two officers, two extras, uh, from 8 to 12, that's 8 p.m. to 12 a.m., and then 12 a.m. to 4. Now, what we've done is we've increased that, and that's five individuals from 8 to 12 and 12 to 4. That's along with the, uh, the regular patrols. So that's the additional, and that's going from Thursday to Sunday. So that's an extra few days and, uh, and extra personnel. And also what we've done is because of the, uh, the slight uptick during the daytime hours, we've added the gang unit on the weekends also. And the gang unit is going to be starting earlier uh, during the day. Their usual hours are 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. Now we're starting them earlier on the weekends. And, and if that needs to be expanded, then we'll expand that as well. But those are the, some, of the, some of the things that the police department is doing to augment our regular patrols uh, uh, during, the, uh, during this time. Great. Thank you. And you know, in spirit of everyone talking about the gun violence, on a law enforcement perspective, how are investigations done to stem the accessibility to illegal guns? Well, I can't speak to uh, actual uh, investigations that, that are ongoing right now because of, uh, obviously, we, we don't want to compromise those investigations. But obviously, with our federal and our state partners and the district attorney's office, you know, what we do is, is uh, basically we develop leads, we gather intelligence, we track and, and attempt to apprehend uh, targeted individuals. And those are the, uh, what I would say would be the top 2% of, uh, of violent offenders. And that's, uh, that's pretty much, uh, that's the basis of how our uh, enforcement action uh, is located. And I, my last point is, as a business owner in the city, and doing primarily business during those impact patrols, how do you suggest that we help you guys 
do your job and, and have a collaborative effort? That's an excellent question. I'll tell you where probably where uh, we're lacking is that when we start an investigation and uh, when an investigation is ongoing, we certainly could use the public's assistance, and that's business owners as well as uh, uh, residential owners, anything, and I, and I mean license plates, uh, any descriptions of, of people involved. We have to pretty much look at past events we come from, we're coming from behind, we're trying to piece things together through other means to eventually uh, develop a case against individuals. What we're lacking is, even if the information is anonymous, we would appreciate the public's help in at least giving us license plates. When something involving a shooting could occur, it could be between two vehicles, there are other vehicles in the area and, and there are uh, certainly, there are residences in the area we could use, uh, for instance, even license plates, even from an anonymous level. That would greatly uh, assist us because, as I said, we come from behind. It takes us longer to build a case when we don't have the necessary information. As I mentioned before, there are, uh, at some point, we'll have over 200 officers, which are levels we haven't seen in the 1980s, a commitment by uh, Mayor Sullivan. But even with 200 officers, it, there's a great span of, uh, of geography, we can't cover everything. And in the past, when we've gotten, for instance, and I mentioned it before, license plates, we've been able to uh, apprehend offenders much quicker than if we have to uh, conduct a thorough investigation. Now, mind you, I can't discuss investigations, but we're in the process of conducting numerous investigations involving firearm violence. If we had information, they certainly could be solved uh, much quicker. So I think that's the way that uh, business owners and, um, and residences, um, the public could help us. I'm glad you bring up the license plate issue because I do have my security team here with me. And there's always a gentleman outside throughout the whole evening. A lot of times these cars drive by fast. You know, we do have the surveillance cameras, but it's, sometimes it's hard to zoom in on the license plate. So I'm glad you mentioned that so they can hear that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Counselor, good evening. Good evening. My name is Tina Cardoza. I'm at-large counselor in Brockton, for those of you that don't know me. But I'm also a community activist. And Mayor Sullivan, thank you for putting this together. You know that this is near and dear to me. And Madam President, also thank you um, for plugging North Junior High and the work that we're doing there, because that's important. Um, thank you to Brockton Police and Brockton Fire and School Police for all the information that you guys gave me today. I will be bringing this back to my constituents and, you know, going on the radio and talking to the Cape Verdean community um, about these things. Um, as you know that this is an issue, every time we have a forum, um, the information, the way we get the information to the community, we kind of have to do better about getting the information out in the different languages. So we said this during our at-large um, um, meeting that we had recently that may be looking at how do we get this information to folks in the different languages because that's important we want to make sure we're including all of our community um, maybe next time when we have a panel discussion like this bringing folks from the different um, communities the Haitian community the Cape Verdean community the Latino community so that it's more inclusive and more diverse Council, I just do want to let you know that we did invite uh, all the associations from Brockton all the ethic associations Associations, John Messia, I charged him to do that. Yeah, but I, I recognize, that he did. I do recognize that multiple languages is a mm -hmm. problem. Right. I do also want to say um, that uh, Lamar and, and, and Out Front, which are the billboard advertising and letting us, we put it on 24 again as well, digital. But I want to work with you, Tina, because right. you know we, we need to have this place filled next time. Right, you know? right. So I'll do what I can yeah. to bring the information to the community. Again, as an activist, I'm out there and I'm talking to people all the time. I want to commend the folks that are here because this shows that you really care about the city and I hope that you bring this information back. I know Inez is here from the Latina women's and maybe she can bring it back to the Latino community and I saw I think I saw Marlene from Haitian Community Partners so just bringing this back I, I commend you guys for being here and all the great questions and comments that you guys made for the young lady that stood up and said she wants to give back I'm happy to talk to you after this as well um, and then just a couple items that I would suggest law enforcement is 
awesome. We need more, we know that. My brother's a police officer, my cousin's a police officer, all Boston police, I love the police officers. But then I have a daughter who's a teacher, and she's in the schools every day dealing with more social issues than anything else, and more trauma than anything else. Our kids are traumatized. And so we can't look at gun violence prevention and any violence prevention without addressing trauma. So really supporting our schools, adding more adjustment counselors, adding more mental health, school-based mental health um, for our kids is going to be key in preventing violence. And um, the other issue that comes up a lot is uh, uh, having, and I said this to Bob, uh, Mayor Sullivan, we need a task force to try to get a trauma response team together because that's important. The young man who just mentioned, what are we going to do when the next person gets shot? We had a couple um, issues. I know the mayors had like one after another. We had a couple um, kids who died in a car accident recently, and I reached out to the mayor to say, hey, this is a large Cape Verdean community that's warning these two kids that died in that car accident. And people were calling saying, like, what are we going to do? Where do we conjugate? You know, where's the spokesperson that comes out when this thing, these things happen? And where's the trauma response? Because that's important. When these kids witness violence, they either grow up to be victims or perpetrators. So we really need to address the trauma. So I'm willing to work with you all. I've reached out to Chief Gomes about this, um, to go into the police department, bring in folks to do more trainings, work with you to put a task force together to address the trauma when it happens. Because that's how we prevent uh, violence is by addressing childhood adverse experiences. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councilor. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Stanton. Good evening. Good evening, uh, sir. Who? I really, you guys all, you know, said wonderful things. Please don't take the picture. Thank you. Um, but I really don't want to talk to you guys. Um, no offense. Um, I wish this place was filled. Uh, Lieutenant Panaka said it perfectly, he kind of stole my thunder really, but um, tips, call. Everybody in here should know, you know, the non-emergency line for the police department, 941-0200. Um, I believe there's an anonymous tip on the website. Um, also, know your neighbors. You know, drug dealers come in and they do drug deals right in front of your house. You don't know it. You don't know your neighbor. If you know who your neighbors are, you know what cars they drive. When you see somebody suspicious in the neighborhood, call. Get the license plate. Call anonymously, whatever you like. Just do it. Um, make it so they don't want to come into our neighborhoods. Eventually, if, if, you keep, if you see activity and you call, eventually they'll leave. They will stop coming to our neighborhoods. And it really starts with us. The police are doing their job, I think. Um, Chief Gomes is, is unbelievable. I, I really, I, his track record speaks for itself. Um, but I think we, the citizens, have to do more. Um, I think it really starts with us giving the information to the police. Um, and if they get that information, those drugs are off the streets, the guns are off the streets. Also, addiction. Um, it's a problem, you know, there aren't a lot of people. I mean, there are a lot of people here, but not as much as it would be uh, nice to have more. Um, addiction has probably touched everybody in this room somehow. You know somebody. Um, do something about it. Reach out to them. Try and get them help. And if they don't want the help, you know what? Call the police. If you know they're buying drugs, call the cops. It's better off to have them arrested in jail than dead. Um, so I really think it, it, we need to do a better job as a community. Um, and we're a very diverse community, Cape Verdean. I mean, there are, you know, a hundred different um, ethnicities and all that. But know your neighbors, even if you don't speak their language. Talk to them. Just get to know them. And like I said, like Lieutenant Panaka said, you know, tips, call. You don't have to give your name. You don't have to, you know, do anything like that. Call. Make it uncomfortable for them to come into your neighborhoods. Great job. Thank you, Matt. Good Hi, evening. how are you? Um, so, a couple quick things. Um, Newby made a point um, of saying about um, policing. What I think we need is better policing overall. Um, we need a, a better relationship between the police department, 
and the citizens. Um, there needs to be a better relationship, I think, overall between the actual citizens. And someone said the other day at the end of the CP meeting um, about having a citizen police review board. I think that's something that the city definitely needs. Um, also, um, do you know if the, we are going to be having police body cams? We're in the process of going back to collective bargaining for all the unions. That would have to be a bargain position. So I can't answer that, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Um, I, I think, you know, the chief and I talked briefly about that. That's something that, you know, exonerates a lot of police officers more than just prosecutes a lot of police officers. So I think that's a win-win for everybody. Um, as far as the youth, so from 12 years old to like 20, uh, but especially the like 14 to 20, there's nothing for them to do. Now, you're gonna have the kids that go to the Y, that go to the Boys and Girls Club, but then you're gonna have the kids that don't wanna do any of that, right? That don't participate in sports, that don't have the active school activities, that don't wanna do any of that. What are we doing for those kids? So, I could just talk about what we are going to do is we're going to continue the process of what previous mayor has done after the dark program is happening. I, I okayed it today. Um, the, the park system is going to happen again, right? Um, you know, we, we're lucky we have the Boys and Girls Club here. We have the YMCA here. Um, you know, we have a wonderful library system here that does enrichment, extracurricular activities. Right now, um, there's 42, this is a woman's suffrage anniversary, mm -hmm. there's 42 uh, educational facilities. I've gone to the first three, 39 more of these. So, so we, we could do a better job, I realize that. Um, and I'll work with you on that. But I do know that you know the Brockton uh, Public Schools uh, are working. We still have the Get Ready program here. The uh, you know the Drama Club. And I do want to do two two shout outs. First of all, for um, Brockton High School basketball boys basketball. If you can go 7:30 this Friday night to Taunton. If the boys win, they go to the Garden. So that's a good thing if you can make it 7:30. And then the Brockton High Drama Club, right? So Act 1, Scene 1 is here in the summer, but we're mm -hmm. talking about the Brockton High Drama Club, the state festival. They just won down in Bourne. They're going on to the next level. So again, this is the good things. We always see the bad things about Brockton on the news. We got to market the good things. Mm -hmm. A high percentage of kids that graduate from here that go on to college, go on to Ivy League colleges. Highest percentage, I was just interviewed today by the Department of Education, highest percentage of John and Abigail scholarship recipients are from Brockton High School. So. We need to provide more opportunities. We also, not everybody's an athlete, I get it, but we also have to realize that there's a childhood obesity problem in the nation. We have a duty to address that as well. So, yeah, keep going, because I love what you say. Right, I just, you know, but there are kids who don't want to do any of those things. You know, so what do we do for those kids who don't want to participate in the school programs, who don't want to participate in the sports programs? Those kids that fall between the cracks, because they're the ones who are going to, who are going to smoke. They're the ones who are going to try the edibles, um, which is a huge problem now in the schools, as we know. Um, you know, so what are we going to do for all of those other kids? I'm just going to refer back to what the mayor said. The school does offer a lot of programs, but we also have a lot of independent uh, organizations that offer mentorship. What you're mm -hmm. telling me is uh, somebody who doesn't want to be involved with the schools or sports really needs some guidance, so mm -hmm. maybe they need to get involved with a mentor. And there is, um, I know there's many organizations, if you'd like, um, you know, I'll get you some of them. Um, I know there's the uh, Brockton's Promise, which is uh, huge in, with mentorship. They mentor a lot of students, uh, a lot of kids, young ages, and then, um, you know, they, they make great mentors. But I can get you a list. I know there's there's many organizations. I know the Boys and Girls Club also have, you know, they, they'll reach out and they have mentors as well. So maybe if you know of students, they just, we need to find out where they are or who they are and get, get them some, somebody to mentor them or to take them under their wing. Okay, yeah, that would be great because, I, I mean, I've been a mentor in this city. Um, and you can ask the mayor, I'm all over the city. Yeah, um, so if there's a program that's out there, I really, I would know about it. Um, and I'm, so I'm asking because there's, 
for 14 to 20, there's not many programs out there. Um, and I'm asking because I have kids that come up to me and, and, you know, and they'll say, Miss Linda, I'm, I'm 17. What's out there is a, is a blunt. What's out there is, is, is edibles. What's out there is sex. So I don't want to go to the Boys and Girls Club um, because that's not for me. I don't want to do the why. Um, you know, I, I'm not interested in sports. So like, what do I do? You know, th there's only so many times that they can do the same thing without getting bored out of their minds. So, you know what I mean? Like, I need other options for these kids. So we have a lot of resources, and I say that all the time. Brockton has a lot of resources. It's just a matter of getting them to the people who need them. Oh, I'll um, definitely so get with you then. We have arts. We have the Stacy Adams um, arts, uh, you know, Brockton Arts, uh, Arnie Danielson, and now, um, and I don't... Uh, there's a young lady that's taken over for Arnie that's the head of Brockton Arts. So if they're interested in arts, they have, I think it's a matter of finding out what they're interested in and getting them involved. But Brockton has a lot to offer and I will get you that information. As far as for the summertime, Brockton Public Schools prints a huge booklet of everything available throughout the summer for students. So there is a lot going on. Okay. We'll make sure that, um, you know, we get that information to you. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, well. well, another thing that I'm doing in the mayor's office hasn't happened is we're going to have an internship program for kids, uh, for students. I came to Brockton High when Moses was the mayor, and we went over the music room over there, and it's mostly ninth and 10th graders, a couple 11, one senior, and I said, does anybody have any interest in doing it? Not everybody wants to be a lawyer or a politician, mm -hmm. but it gives a good experience, and it's about networking and interaction and coming to City Hall and going to schools. I had 12 kids that said that they would. Um, it hasn't happened before. It's going to happen under my watch. So. Shirley and I would be happy to talk to you and kind of brainstorm and figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Sounds great. Thanks. Good evening. Hi, Ann Champagne, born in Brockton. Um, I live over by Westgate Mall. I was shopping with my granddaughter the day the bullets were flying. She was ten, she's 10 years old, you know, so I'm thrilled about this meeting, and I, am, um, I just feel like it's imperative and critical that we do something and we do something fast because I can't live like this. I can't. I can't subject my grandchildren to it, you know? Um, I guess my question, being a single woman, um, sometimes it's a little scary, you know? I know a lot of things, I see a lot of things, I've heard things about murders, all kinds of stuff in Brockton, I'm a lifer. And so, years ago we had a neighborhood crime watch, and for being a single person that wants to stay anonymous but has information, it's better when you're not alone, you know? And I, I'm wondering if that's something we could maybe look at again. It seems to have fallen by the wayside. I used to be involved in it years back, and it seems to have been fall, fallen by the wayside recent years. And uh, for me, it would be empowering. Thank you, and Thanks, thank you for Ian. the meeting. So, so we have a neighborhood crime watch. Um, Bill Healy, who's gonna be retiring uh, from Brockton PD, uh, has been charged with that. Um, we're always adding to that. Um, you know, we are going to have a replacement when the officer does retire. Um, can we do a better job on it? Yes. Um, but it's only as good as the commitment that the citizens in the neighborhoods want to do. There's certain areas of the city that have thriving. Ward 3 has some thriving. Um, but we, we need to do better to inform, educate, and then and make sure that, you know, when we do it, that the, the necessarily, um, uh, I, I keep saying this, but it's true, I mean, the necessary offerings are provided. So, I mean, Bill has been uh, really a steadfast partner in that. He's done yeoman's work. He's going to be retiring. We can't, because of his retirement, we cannot let it slip. And I know Chief Gomes and I know Lieutenant Banaka have talked to me about it, and we're going to continue. But we want to keep adding to it. And, and really, it's, it's engagement like this, you know. People are here, you know. Um, John Spader, you don't, need to, you don't need to be here tonight. You're here, you know. So it's, it's people that come here that are going to make a difference, but rest assured that it's not going to go away with Bill's retirement. Thanks, Ian. So just to answer Ann's question, uh, you're, I'm figuring you're in Ward 7. If you're near the mall, you're either 7 or 1. But um, Ward 7 has a few active uh, crime watch groups that I've attended throughout the year. So if you're interested, just reach out to me. My number is public. It's on the city website. And I will get you um, 
I'll let Officer Healy let us know which one is the closest to you. Dennis, good evening. Good evening, Dennis Tracy, school teacher for many years, homeowner in the city. First, you took some wind out of my sails when I was going to give the plug for the uh, basketball team Friday night. And please do make it, because we got a great team this year. I think the city has some great programs for kids. And I'm going to say this. And I've said it many a time. People know how, how I feel graduating from Brockton High. This is one of the best high schools in the country that offers so many different programs. Seriously, people, we have a drama department that's just second to none. We probably have the best music and band department of any high school in the whole country. What Vinnie McCraner has done for years is just astronomical. Great athletic department. We have programs for kids, whether they want to do art, checkers, you name it, debate, we have it here. We have a Y that has programs there. We have a Boys and Girls Club that has programs there. You're right, we have a great library system that has programs there, too. I think everything a kid wants or needs is here. I heard what Tina said, and it was on the, about a task force where kids who are traumatized. Now, I'm going to address something to the lieutenant on the school department police force. I do know we have kids who are homeless, who are on the run. And I don't mean on the run because they got warrants on them, because they just don't have a place to stay. We do so much for the drug addict, the alcoholic, the rehabilitation program. But we don't do anything for kids who are from alcoholic homes and drug addicted homes. We don't teach them any coping skills. We don't have programs for them. And this is something that we really, really need. Because those are the kids that are sitting on the fence. We have mothers, unfortunately, that are poor. They're trying to raise the kids the right way. A lot of, one of the problems we have in the city is there's no fathers at home. There just isn't any fathers at home anymore. The kids don't have a sense of direction, a good mentor. We do need to do something with kids who are homeless. We do need to do something for kids who are vulnerable. We do need to work with these kids who are from alcoholic, drug addicted homes. We need to teach them some scoping skills. And I will also say this too, and Lieutenant, you know this, in Brockton High, I have 4,300 students. There's probably only 100 to 150 that are really disruptive. The rest of the kids are really, really good kids. All right? And that's what we have to really work on, keeping those kids good and giving them the opportunities they need in life. So we're looking at a very top percentage, maybe 2% of the kids in the high school, maybe 1% that are really disruptive. But I really would like to do something with the kids who are from alcohol and drug-addicted homes teaching them some, some skills on how to survive. We do so much for the drug addict, the alcoholic, but what are we doing for the kids who need assistance? Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> Senator. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to the Council President Azak and all our public safety personnel and the residents who showed up tonight. As you mentioned earlier, our representatives are in a meeting and they're still dealing with some revenue issues, and uh, they would have been here. But uh, just a couple of things we, I, I mentioned, you mentioned earlier about the Shannon Grant today, and that's so important to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as well as the city of Brockton. And the governor has presented his budget. It's gonna go to the House of Representatives and gonna come to us in the Senate. And we have been more than strongly supportive of the Shannon Grant. It has been so helpful to Brockton. I served as a vice chairman of public safety when I was a House member. I'm on the Ways and Means Committee in the Senate side now, and we are looking forward to increased funding for the Shannon Grant that has helped so many youth keep them off the street to so many programs, and also the Safe and Successful Youth Initiative with Workforce Development Street Outreach, Case Management, Mental Health, and Education. And anything we can do as a state delegation, we're here for you as we work for the residents as well as your office, Mr. Mayor, and the City Council. Uh, where our doors are open and uh, these issues are so important. And fortunately, working with the delegation, we got the highest increase of student funding for us, public schools, not only for Brockton, but the whole Commonwealth with the Student Opportunity Act. So thank you for having this meeting tonight. Anything we can do at the state level, we have a great delegation in there working together, please let us know. But as was mentioned, I'm glad you mentioned earlier, 
about the Child Shannon Grant and the Safe and Support of the Youth Initiative. These are programs that help so many young people out there. So thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Senator. Um, I just, well, we're going to probably conclude. Um, I want to thank everybody, first of all, for being here, but I also want to uh, do a quick plug on two different things. Um, first one is coronavirus. So I had a, uh, a roundtable task force. I've been on conference calls every single day, uh, Board of Health. Um, uh, my wife's a physician assistant, so she helps me when I get home and we continue the conversation. But listen, we can't panic, but we have to address it as a serious medical risk, right? We have to. We have to educate. We have to wash our hands. We have to disinfect. The standard is using alcohol swabs and wipes. Okay, that's what we need to do, not bleach. That's not killing germs. Um, at City Hall and in the schools, we've charged uh, custodians to, to clean up on a regular basis. I want to let you know the Executive Director of the Housing Authority, Tom Tebow, I had met with him today to talk about what they're doing for safety um, and the Housing Authority, right? Um, you know, and they're doing that. We have uh, Brockton Police assigned there as well. Um, and, and for the coronavirus, let me just share with you some information, if I could. I had a roundtable yesterday. It was Board of Health, Brockton um, uh, Emergency Management, the police, the fire, President of Cardinal Spellman, um, VA Hospital uh, Chief of uh, Emergency, Signature Healthcare, Brockton Hospital, uh, Chief of the ER, Brockton Housing Authority, Father Bill's Mainspring, and I had a conversation conference call with the uh, President of Good Samaritan Medical Center. So what we need to do is, as a community, right, we need to be proactive, and that's why we're having these conversations. We also have to remember this. Listen, if you have a uh, feeling of flu-like symptoms, self-isolate. That's what they're telling us to do, right? Um, you know, even the church I go to, I'm Catholic. I went to Mass the other day. The Archdiocese is saying we can't do peace be with you anymore, right? You just, you just got to do that. It's the little things that are going to add up. We need to do that. That's coronavirus. It's a serious issue. But the schools... Uh, are working diligently with my office and all health professionals to do that. I wanted to share that information with you. Uh, the other thing is census 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, we only have 10 years, okay? 10 years. If we don't get this right, we're burdened with that. We need to get the numbers right this time. We were not counted appropriately in 2010. We lost a lot of money from the states and the feds. We can't do that. We have Eva, who's dedicated and works out of City Hall. Uh, she was hired by Mayor Rodriguez. Her job is charged to making sure that we get the numbers. On the books is 97,000 residents of the city of Brockton. We know we're well over 100,000, well over 100,000. We got to get it right. This year, the Fed's letting us do it three different ways. You can fill it out and mail it in. You can do a phone call and answer your questions via phone, or you can do an online. It's in multiple languages, I think 14 languages. We need to get it right or leaving money on the table for another 10 years. So let's, let's do that, please. Um, and the last thing is, I'm proud to say that the late uh, William Carpenter, Mayor Brockton, the parking garage named after Bill, opened the other day. It's a, it's a game changer in downtown Brockton. You know, I want to thank the BRA, the Parking Authority, uh, Rob May from Planning. I, uh, I want to, uh, uh, again, pass on our wishes to the Carpenter family and to Julie, Bill's fiance. Uh, it's, 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 it's a really state-of-the-art facility. The only other one like it is in Australia. And people are saying, what does that mean? It's the only one in the United States that actually has license plate reader. That's how you pay. They don't take money. There's no gate. You drive in, and we have technology, modern technology that does that. It's awesome, and it's great, and we're going to maximize that. We're going to have more investment downtown because of that. Um, again, I want to thank the DA's office, the state police, Brockton PD, uh, Brockton PD slash school police, and of course, fire, and City Council President for being here tonight. And on behalf of them, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. And I also want to especially recognize two other people in the audience tonight because we keep talking about the good things of Brockton. Well, you know what? Vinnie McCrina did wonderful things on music, and we love Vinnie. But Carol Thomas and Elaine, Elaine Kelly right there, they put Brockton drama on the map. Brockton drama on the map. And that tradition's being carried on by Bob Hogan as well. So again, thank each and every one of you. Know that. The door is always open, and I mean that. Um, come see me, 45 School Street at City Hall. Uh, I want to continue to work with you and work for you to better Brockton. Thank you all. God bless. Drive safely tonight. Thank you.